Hi, my name is Nathan, and uh, today I'd like to demonstrate and explain the operating principle of how this machine that you see before you works. Uh, it's called a reciprocal solenoid engine, or a linear engine, whichever term you prefer most. Um, it's made up of five uh, main operating parts. The stator, which is the stationary part, uh, of the electromagnets that don't move. There's four of them. And they interact with the fields of the armature, or the shuttle as I like to call it, that reciprocates back and forth. And uh, all that makes up the locomotion part of the unit. Then there's the limit switches. There's one on either side, or e either end or extreme of the track. When the armature, this part, or the shuttle, hits one of those limit switches, uh, the limit switch triggers or engages a solenoid or electromagnet up here. And the electromagnet moves this carriage over. This is the relay, by the way. It's uh, a latching relay. It's a double pull type, uh, and the latch is magnetic or it uses a permanent magnet to latch. So what happens is when the shuttle, or I mean, when the carriage here on the relay moves, it engages a set of contacts. And from one set of contacts on one side to the other set on the, on the flip side, uh, they'll either, they'll either uh, send the current in forward or reverse polarity to the armature here. And so what happens is the armature magnets, there's two wound coils within this uh, yoke here between the two rods. And what happens is when the current is reversed from its forward polarity, uh, the whole unit here, the whole shuttle, uh, moves in the opposite direction. Uh, it's also being partially supported or boosted up uh, so the top bushing here isn't uh, isn't hitting the uh, top of the, the guide rails and that's achieved by uh, an assembly of two spools of thread uh, or two empty wooden spools of thread that have been uh, threaded onto a bolt and they roll on a platform that has grooves inset into it I know it looks a bit strange. Um, I built the frame a couple of years ago before I added all the other mechanics and electrical parts uh, into it. Uh, I was kind of interested in architecture back then, so I sort of made it look uh, a bit like a building, so it has that kind of unusual appearance. Uh, I probably would have designed it differently if I had done it now, but oh well, what can you do? I built this whole thing. Um, using mainly hand tools. The only power tools I used were an electric drill and a Dremel tool. So really anybody has the means to build one of these. So here we have the first side. We have the power box here with the input from the battery and the output to the rest of the motor and the switch and the light of course. Uh, and then you can see where the the guide rods end at this end there's a groove that's been uh, cut into each of them on the top and then this metal plate here this uh, steel plate slides into it and it presses against the wooden frame behind here and that's what holds the uh, the rails in and it also doubles as a um, as a uh, connector to complete the magnetic circuit for this side of the magnet assembly this is the opposite side from the front, and uh, the only thing different about the other side uh, is that instead of ribbon conductors coming up to the shuttle here, uh, there's two sets of three terminals here with wires uh, linking the stator and the armature components up to the relay up top. And the last end here, which has the, uh, the same metal link between the two guide rails as on the other side. So it's kind of almost like uh, if you can imagine two horseshoe magnets with the light poles facing each other. If you could uh, 
press them together without them repelling. That's kind of how the, the stator part of this machine works. Okay, and back to the first side. Uh, just one other note, the uh, board that this relay sits on is actually hinged and it swings upwards like this uh, for better maintenance access of the components here and just to all around view them better too. So I'll get a battery in the voltmeter and we'll fire it up. Alright, I'm running it on about 15 and a half volts uh, from a modified drill battery. Uh, it's reading about 16 and a half right now because I charged it uh, on a bit higher of a voltage than I should have, but it uh, shouldn't hurt it. Uh, that's the relay there. So it always has to be engaged in one position. If it's in the middle, like uh, like that, then no power will get to the armature and it won't move. So it's always got to be in either either or position. All right, let's fire it on here. Moves back and forth at a fairly good clip. You can see the meter's really jumping around there. It does consume a fairly vast amount of power. If you happen to shut off the power switch uh, when it's in the middle of a cycle, when the relay is switching over, uh, it won't turn back on again because then the relay will be in the neutral position. So that does have a tendency to happen sometimes. This time it didn't. Uh, so that's about it. So if you stay tuned, I'll give you a more in-depth rundown of the operation of this whole device here. Um, just another note, this device does consume vast amounts of power and it was, it's kind of, the design is kind of based off of uh, antique reciprocal, reciprocal type engines from the 1840s made by Charles Grafton Page and illustrated in Daniel Davis's manual. Uh, that's kind of where I just got the idea and I extrapolated from there. But this device that I built here is designed by me and it doesn't really mirror that well the devices in his manual. It's just sort of based off of the same kind of idea of reciprocal motion before engineers knew how to make rotary type motors. It's not as efficient obviously because uh, all the momentum uh, is lost when it crashes into one side and it has to pick it up again uh, to move to the opposite side. So really the inertia of the weight of the shuttle is wasted <laughs> and it does consume a lot of power because it has eight electromagnets. Uh, that are fairly um, low resistance so that's why the meter even though this is a fairly strong battery it's 1700 milliamps that's why the the meter is jumping way down to 10 and below volts so that's it <laughs>